We're gonna hit the plus button up top. Last time we hit the invoice, we're in the customer area. And so this time we're just gonna go to the sales receipt. This is the form, it says a receipt. So you might imagine it as the thing that you'd get from a cash register or something uh, to help you remember which form does what. We're gonna add a new customer here. I'm just gonna call it string music. So I'm just making up the customer. Now, if we're at a cash register, then uh, you might not have, you might not get the customer information. If you're at like a food truck or something, you might just have a generic customer uh, item here because you're not going to get the name of everybody. If you have repeat customers or if you sell larger things, it's more likely that you might be able to get their personal information and whatnot and send them the, your newsletter. But we're just going to add just enough information to populate our our customer field here. This is the required field right there. So I'm just going to post that. That's got the asterisk. I'm going to save it. And uh, the email might not be as important as with an invoice because we're making the sale at this point in time. But if we can collect the email, it would be nice so that we can send them our newsletter and everything. And then we're going to say that this is on the 19th. Let's, I'm hitting the plus button, bringing it up to the 19th. And so I'm tabbing through. The, we'll, we'll keep the sales receipt populating automatically. The location, like with the invoice, is necessary in order to calculate the sales tax if sales tax is applicable tags we're not going to have anything on the tags with the payment type this is an informational field i'm going to imagine it's going to be cash here just for the same reasons i want to group my cash together when we make the deposit to show you this this concept with the undeposited funds and so on uh, but you can have check you can have credit card and if if you have an electronic transfer or something you can add another one if you would like that another one it doesn't really change how the transaction is going to happen the accounts impacted in other words but it's a it's an informational tool i'm not going to put a reference number and then the deposit to this is the key we could put it into the checking account but if we're making multiple sales at our cash register and we deposit them directly into the checking account and then when we physically make the cash deposits and the same would be the case with the credit card because the credit card company will likely not deposit into our checking account one by one sale but with some kind of grouping process so we're gonna have to talk to the credit card company to figure out how they're grouping it so we can come up with a system that will work if we're making the cash deposits we're not going to go to the bank and cash deposit one five dollar bill at a time we're going to put them into the bank usually in one lump sum so uh if we do that then when i do the reconciliation it's going to show up on the bank statements possibly with the bank feeds or through the bank reconciliation as one lump sum so i don't want to put it directly into the cash checking account typically but rather go through the payments to deposit, which is like the undeposited funds. This is the same thing when we talked about the accrual process, when we had an invoice and then the receive payment. But when you're doing that a sales receipt at a cash register, you're even more likely to need this, this step because it's likely you're getting cash and therefore you need that, that added uh, payments to deposit or it's likely you're getting credit cards at that point in time. If you were getting electronic transfers, then it's more likely that you can just enter it directly into the checking account because it's going to show up on your bank statement with with just that one number or if you're getting a check it's more likely that you could put it directly into your bank account uh, that way as well because it's going to be in there one lump sum the other thing that's kind of interesting and why i kind of still like using the payments to deposit instead of going directly to the checking account with a sales receipt or the receive payment is because when I organize the data in the cash account, as we will see, it's kind of nice to have all the increases only be from deposits, because then you can just search by deposits and you can look at the increases. Possibly there'll be a transfer that could be an increase as well, but that limits your fields. If you have sales receipts that are also increasing the accounts and other kind of, inc then, it, then it becomes a little bit more difficult to sort, but that's kind of a, a technical minor detail okay then we got the products we'll enter the items that we set up in a prior presentation just like with the invoice so we're going to sell, sell an elp so that's going to be our our epiphone les paul we imagine they bring these up to the to the shop and we'll just say one of those bring them up in the shop to us and uh, this is a, actually i want a gs let's do a g 
SB, a GSB, not an ELP, and have one of those that's a more expensive guitar. So we upsold them to the, <laughs> to the, whatever. Okay, here we go. And then the other one is gonna be, and then that we'll have an ELP as well. Let's do an ELP two. So an ELP, and let's say we had three of those, three of those for whatever reason, and 500. So that comes out to a total of the 2,277. Uh, those are both taxable items. So that looks good. And then it's trying to tax down here on the location. So there it goes. And then I'm going to hit the drop down and I'm going to use my 5% tax to make it generic. So I'm just doing that to make it a, a generic problem. You could also, if you wanted to change it to match what we're putting in here, you can hit the, the sales tax item here and you can edit it generally in there if you were on the at location one and you can override it if you want just so you can match the numbers out for our generic problem purposes. So there we have it. What's this gonna do when we record it? Well, it's a sales receipt. That means that there's gonna be payment that happened at the point of sale. So there's gonna be an increase typically in some kind of, of a check cash account. This case, not the checking account, but we put it into the payments to deposit, which is like the undeposited funds account uh, because they've changed the term of it, but it's basically the same thing. If, if you've worked with the undeposited funds account, then the other side is going to, and that amount's gonna be the full amount, including the sales tax. And then the other side's gonna go to the revenue accounts driven by the items by the 2,277. The difference is gonna go not to revenue, but to a payable because we're acting as the tax collector of the 11385. And then we're also going to have a decrease to the inventory by amounts not on the actual sales receipt, but driven by these items. And then we're going to have an increase in cost of goods sold by that same amount. The impact on the income statement will be the increase in revenue minus the cost of goods sold, which isn't on this form, but driven by the items. And we're going to have a decrease to the inventory account sub ledger by unit for the guitars that were sold. So a lot happened in here, but notice the data input can be done by just someone working at a cash register, right? And they could just populate that charge and we're good to go. So let's save it. Now, obviously, if you go down here, you can, you can add lines, message to display, message display on a statement. You can add attachments and so on. You can cancel, you can clear, you can print preview. Let's look at what it looks like. Uh, this you can use this form to provide but it's not probably as likely that you're going to give it to the customer or as important as say an invoice but it is an, a form that you might provide externally uh, as well so if you could customize it and whatnot so make recurring and you can customize and then you've got your more options copy void delete uh, tran transaction journal audit history and then the options here save and new save and close save and send 